thank you for being here today. And before we start our VE Day service, I would officially like to thank the Mayor of Cote St. Luke, Anthony Husfather, and his City Council for this wonderful park. Indeed, this park, Veterans Park, as it is, as it is called, is the fruit of collaboration between the Legion and the City of Cote St. Luke to ensure that the Senate have be placed in an area of our city where all residents can come to pay respect to those who have lost their lives to protect our freedom. I would like to call upon the mayor and all the councillors to come up and together we will cut the ribbon that will officially inaugurate this beautiful park. Gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, it is my pleasure to call upon the President of the Brigadier Kish, Branch Number 97 of the Royal Canadian Legion, Code St. Luke, who will act as your Master of Ceremonies for the events taking place today. May I present Comrade Bob Felstein. I am honored to greet our distinguished and most honorable guests, ladies, comrades, and gentlemen. The Brigadier Frederick Kish Branch of the Royal Canadian Legion extends a very warm welcome to all who have come to help celebrate our annual VE Day Parade and Service in Veterans Park. I would ask you to please remain standing while all the five national anthems and sung are played. And now I'll call upon Cantor Epstein to sing the Israeli anthem, Atikva. And you can all please join in with him. Please rise. <laughs> Yeah. 
years ago, the greatest, largest, and most massive armada of warships in the history of the world set sail from southern shores of England to the shores of Normandy, D-Day, June the 6th, 1944. And some of us who are here with us today have been on one of those ships. This was the beginning of freedom and food to the western occupied countries of Europe. 64 years ago, on May the 8th, 1945, the peace treaty was signed in Reims, France, and that was called VE Day, Victory in Europe. Due to the fact that the war in the Pacific did not end until August of 1945. And that is why we are here today to pay tribute and remember 45,000 young, brave Canadians who laid down their lives for their country and lie peacefully in the bosom of the earth in various cemeteries in different parts of the world. We were that which others did not want to be, and we went where others feared to go, and did what others failed to do. We asked for nothing from those who gave nothing, and reluctantly accepted the thought of eternal loneliness should we fail. We have seen the face of terror. We have cried, pained, and hoped. But most of all, we have lived times others would say were best forgotten. At least someday we will be able to say we did what we had to do and that we were proud of what we were, soldiers, sailors, airmen. Yes, we were a band of brothers. We will now have the ceremony for the praising of the wreaths. I call upon the regional director, the regional director general, Charlotte Bastion, representing the, the Minister of Veterans Affairs. Following her will be representative of Professor Erwin Cutler, Federal Member of Parliament, Mount Royal, Mark Leader. Call upon Mr. Lawrence Bourbon, Member of the National Assembly of Quebec, Darcy McGee. Worship Mayor Anthony Housefather, Mayor of Cozy Loop. His Worship Mayor William Steinberg, Mayor of Hampstead. Council General of the State of Israel, Yaron Elroy. Council General of the Netherlands, Hans Glubitz. Council General of the United Kingdom, Anne Jarrett.
Consul General of the United States of America, Deputy Paul Mayer. Representing the Canadian Armed Forces, Colonel Bernard Feinstone, and escorted with Lieutenant Colonel Martin Marcus. Representing the Royal Canadian Legion of Canada, our Dominion President, Comrade Jack Frost, escorted by Tommy Irvin. President of the Royal Canadian Legion of Quebec, Comrade Annette Arsenault. Commander of the Montreal Urban Community Police Station No. 9, Commander Sylvain Bissonnette. NDG Branch 24106, Sergeant at Arms Ted Pretzky escorted with Pat Smith. Machine Branch 8590, past present, Eric Benoit. Number 20, American Legion, Plattsburgh, New York. Commander Howard Turner.
Let us pause for a moment and think reverently of those of our comrades who by sea, by land, and in the air lay down their lives for their sovereign and country. And may they ever inspire us to labor on to the end and that those who need our aid and assistance may ever be worthy of the cause they made. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not worry them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. Ils ne vieilliront pas comme nous qui leur avons survécu. Ils ne connaîtront jamais l'outrage ni le poids des années. Quand viendra l'heure du crépuscule et celle de l'aurore, nous nous souviendrons d'eux. upon His Worship, Mayor Anthony Husfather. Mayor Husfather. Um, President Feldstein, distinguished veterans and members of the armed forces who are joined with us here today, distinguished representatives of our close allies, the United States, Great Britain, the Netherlands, and the State of Israel, uh, member of the National Assembly, Lawrence Bergman, the representatives of Veterans Affairs, and the representative of the Federal Member of Parliament, Erwin Kotler, Mayor Steinberg, former Mayor Lang, and the members of the Cote St. Luke Council, Ruth Kovac, Glenn Nashen, Mitchell Brownstein, Sam Goldblum, Stephen Erdely, Mike Cohen, um, and Adita Berku. I think I got all of us. And, uh, and all of you, this is by far the biggest group of people that I have seen in the 16 years that I've been coming to VE Day events here in Cote St. Luke. And I'm thrilled, thrilled because today is an important day for our community. We're inaugurating Veterans Park, a park that was built by the tender love and care of our legion working together with the city. And also built because of the great foresight of previous Cote St. Luke administrations under Mayor Lang, which saved all of this beautiful park as green space. And if you look behind at the forest, behind our city hall, and you look at Cote St. Luke compared to other communities, you'll see how visionary the people who built Cote St. Luke were. And the reason I tie that in to what we're doing here today on VE Day is that VE Day is a time to remember all of those men and women who loyally served Canada and who loyally served our allies, whether they be the United States or Great Britain or France or Holland. And remember reverently the memories of those people who did not come back. But it's also a time to reverently honor those people who did come back. And Canada is a multicultural tapestry. It's an incredible country between Newfoundland and British Columbia and our territories that brings together cities across the country that are different, vastly different. Nous avons des communautés anglophones et francophones partout au Canada. Nous avons des gens qui ont venu ici de partout dans le monde, qui pratiquent des religions différentes. Mais nous sommes unis par le fait que nous aimons nos villes et nos pays. And when those people came back from the war, those people we are honoring today, not only our veterans from the Second World War, but those veterans from the First World War, 
and those veterans from Korea that we have now added to our monument, and I'm proud to have done so this week, and our other veterans that have served no matter where else in time. Those people built communities like the city of Cote St. Luke. Those people built all of our municipal institutions. They built families. They grew Cote St. Luke from a small village of a few thousand people at the end of the Second World War to 32,000 people today. And they built one of the loveliest places to live on the face of this earth. And I know that as mayor, I say that about Cote St. Luke, but it's true amongst all the communities across our country, all those suburban bedroom communities built after the war in Canada and the United States that were built by our veterans and their families that we're all so proud of. So to you who served our, in our armed forces, who led me and my family and future generations live in peace and in freedom in our country, I thank you not only for that service, but also for coming home and building a fantastic community for future generations to live in. I can only say with the bottom of my heart that I hope that everyone remembers your sacrifices. It's easy for somebody of my age, who most of us had grandfathers and great uncles that served, but I'm hoping that we're able to continue to impart that message to our future generations of the children that are born today who don't have that direct remembrance by having somebody in their family tell them what fighting in a war was like. So it's up to us as a city administration working with the Legion to go into the schools, to talk to people, and to remind them of the fact that all of us, every day, have to stand up for human rights and fundamental, fundamental rights wherever it might be in the world and to correct those fundamental injustices and to support our government and our troops today in Afghanistan and wherever else they one day may be. Thank you all for coming today. I would like to call upon the provincial member of the National Assembly of Quebec, Darcy McGee, Lawrence Bergman. Mr. Chairman Felstein, Rabbi Wolf, Rabbi Jacobson, Consul General, Guramel Ron, Consul Generals of the Netherlands, United Kingdom, Representative of the United States of America, Colonel Feinstone, Mark Leader, representing my dear friend Erwin Kotler, the representative of the Ministry of Veteran Affairs, Mayor Housefather, Mayor Steinberg, City Councilors, Dear veterans, distinguished guests, dear friends, I bring greetings today on behalf of the Premier of Quebec, who has asked me to express his greetings, he being today in France on official duties. I also bring greetings in my capacity as the member of the National Assembly for Darcy McGee. Dear friends, today we are gathered in sadness Nous sommes ici pour nous souvenir et témoigner des moments dans l'histoire de ce monde qui étaient de noircir. We are gathered here to remember the supreme sacrifice that so many Canadians made on land, on sea, in the air. Let us today as every day of our lives, remember those who gave of their lives to keep this country, our dear Canada, free. Let us remember the families of those dear soldiers who died overseas in battle. And of course, let us remember and also pay tribute to the survivors, and many of you are here today, who live each day with those horrendous memories. 
all of those soldiers were Anglophones, Francophones, members of many ethnic and religious community. But no matter their language, their color, their creed or religion, they were one. As the chairman said, a group of brothers. They were historic Canadians and heroic Canadians. Our dear soldiers had and continue to have today throughout the world and in Afghanistan bravery, selflessness, dignity in combat, and an unwavering love of our country, Canada. <coughs> Dear friends, we Quebecers and Canadians are duty-bound to remember and to never forget. Never to forget those who made the supreme sacrifice on our behalf. Never to forget their widows, their families. Never to forget our veterans who came back. They fought for our freedom. And we, we have the responsibility to give a meaning to that special heritage that they gave us. Because the freedom that we enjoy as Quebecers and Canadians is what they gave to us. And we have the obligation to respect that freedom and to embrace that freedom by showing respect to our fellow Canadians, our fellow Quebecers, to show inclusion that everyone is part of our great family, to show harmony and caring amongst each other, and to build caring communities where everyone feels at home and is included. Today, of course, is also the fruition of many years of hard work by our members of the Legion, by our civic fathers, to create and dedicate this wonderful park and the monument here. And may this monument and this park be a beacon of hope and inspiration for the good and welfare of our society. May it always remind us of our valiant men and women who fought for a world of peace and harmony. I thank the veterans for bringing us together today and creating this very inspirational park where we can reflect on the past and pray for a tomorrow of harmony and peace. I would be remiss today if I also did not remember with you the martyrs of the Shoah. The martyrs of the Shoah who went to their death with the words in their mind and their hearts when they said, Shema Yisrael. This was not merely an expression of faith in God, but also a faith in the eternity and resilience of the Jewish people. I made a motion two weeks ago in the Quebec National Assembly, where the entire assembly adopted unanimously a motion remembering Yom HaShoah as Holocaust Memorial Day here in Quebec. Dear friends, the confidence in posterity exhibited by our soldiers, their families, and yes, by the six million victims of the Holocaust, Jewish men, women and child, children, who were murdered for the sole reason that they were Jewish. Their confidence in the posterity of the human race is in our hands to translate in a tangible way. Thank you.
next person I'm calling upon, in our eyes of the Canadian Legion, is the one person that all Legionnaires across Canada, which number approximately 400,000, respect and call upon our Dominion President, Comrade Jack Frost. Distinguished guests and comrades, I am most pleased to be here at your dedication today. This represents one more step to honor our military people, past and present. It is one of the cornerstones that the Royal Canadian Legion was built on, the perpetuation of remembrance. This is one of the traits that the Legion must carry on. When we were formed in 1926, we made a promise to our veterans that we would care for them and that we would honor the memories of those who served and did not get a chance to grow older. And yes, even though the Legion is getting smaller for numerous reasons, we're still carrying out that important work today. And yes, we have to continue to work harder to keep that promise that was made so long ago. Today, our challenge is to sustain and increase our membership and it will take all the capabilities to do that, but it will take all the capabilities of everyone. And I'm confident that the Legion of the future, while it may be different than the one that we know, will continue to keep its promise and not to change its core values. We are more than just a place where people go to tell war stories. Our latest polls show that we put $375 million into the Canadian economy each year and employ over 4,000 people we have veterans programs, youth programs, seniors programs. We have programs for the military that will help them now and in the future. And each one of those programs exists because comrades such as you in Branch 97, Comrade President Felstein, because you care. Not to organization, ne pa fine par la government au mont federal. Last year we put $16 million into programs at the branch level, which includes our donations to charities. These funds were raised locally by members who care about their communities, people like you and people like citizens and civic leaders of this community. In the future, we'll continue to see our veterans returning home. And I offer you this challenge that new veterans will need your help tomorrow the same as you needed it when you come home. They will need us as we need them to continue our works on their behalf. We need the help of their families and we need the help of ordinary Canadians who care about the sacrifices they have made and are making every day so that we can have the Canada we want. If you wish to see more of these dedications and more done for our military people, I urge all of you to think about joining with us as we progress into the future with the past and present in mind. Comrades, I thank you for your time today and thank you, Branch 97, for this wonderful dedication to those who have served, are serving, and will serve in the future for this great nation that we call Canada. Merci beaucoup. that you all heard the words of our comrade president of Dominion Command. The amount of money that the Legion gives out, as he mentioned, was help from people like you. And we will continue as long as we're here. The heroism of the soldiers, of our men, women, and women who fought for Canada in the world wars and
Korea, and in peacekeeping missions. They are heroes. The, it's people who are heroes, they're not only those who died, but all those who returned home, the war veterans who are here to, this afternoon. The Hebrew term for a hero is a gibor. The translation for the word gibor is strong, but it also means hero. And the Tama Tractate Ethics of the Fathers, in chapter four, the first missioner says, who is a hero, who is a gibor? One who conquers his desires. Hakovesh Yitzro. The, the hero is somebody who tr triumphs over their desires. There's a modern day commentary that says that the person who is victorious over their desires is somebody who does something that they don't want to do. That what they do is they triumph over a desire not to do something. And they go out and do what is expected of them and what is required at the moment. So a person who is a hero is somebody who triumphs over a concept of revenge or a concept of anger or a concept of hatred and is doing what is right. The, the war, people who fought in the wars, the, the veterans are in my eyes heroes because they fought for justice and for humanity. Many times in wars people do bad things and people give in to base desires. But the people who who fight for what is right and who conduct themselves with honor and with bravery and with dignity and with a morality to do the proper thing, to help, to save lives, to fight hatred and terror are the, our heroes. It's people who don't want to go to war but go because they feel that it's the right thing to do and they go to help other people and to bring democracy and to bring peace. And these are the heroes. And they are the heroes because they saved the lives of their comrades and they saved our lives as well. I also um, wanted to make a prayer to dedicate the park. May this Veterans Park be a place of happiness, serenity, contentment and generosity. Please allow gladness, peace, and companionship to dwell here. May the park become a home for caring and for kindness. And may all those who visit here know only blessing and peace. Amen. of thanks to all those who participated and joined with us today and please join us at the lower auditorium of the City Hall for refreshments. All dignitaries will proceed first please and then others will follow.
Yes. <laughs> 